good afternoon, everyone, although I'm here in Perth and it's still morning here, so nice to talk with you all. I want to just quickly tell you a little bit about what we're doing here in Western Australia and, of course, you know, across the country, wherever the opportunity um, presents itself. As um, Kate said, I run a consumer and community involvement program across all health, uh, health research organisations, universities, tertiary hospitals um, in WA. And our program was established originally in 1998 at the University of Western Australia and then a couple of years later at the Talathong Kids Institute, particularly in response to community concerns about the linked data capability that was being established in um, Western Australia in the mid-90s. And then, um, you know, people were concerned about um, research being done without consent and, and people didn't know. So the university decided with great foresight, I should think, to put in a consumer advocate a day a week. And that's now gone um, where we had one person working one day a week. I started in 2004 and um, we now, as, as a result of funding, uh, Lottery West um, here in WA, we have um, a team of 10 people working to support consumer and community involvement. So the whole aim of our program is to support the community voice in decision making about health research priorities, policies and practice. Now a lot of work that we've done over the 15 years that I've been here has involved research that's used linked data. So been a lot of conversations, a lot of concerns, and I'm really pleased to say a, a great shifting of the landscape. So um, the sort of um, the services that we provide to consumers and to researchers is we provide advocacy and support for involvement with community links and evidence base. And the big thing that we do is offer teaching and training for researchers and community members. We've got a network of over 1,800 members and I think probably about 1,500 of those are consumers and community members um, that are involved in having a say in research. We've got a website, it's called Involving People in Research and I would suggest perhaps you might like to have a look at that um, after this. So in relation to um, the changing landscape that I mentioned, um, in between 1998 and 2005, when people talked about linked data research, they talked about things like, this is Big Brother in action, people don't know their information is collected and research is conducted, people aren't told about the results, the data could be hacked, WA public is not informed about data linkage, and so on. There was a lot of concern when I first started and I'd actually worked in health previously for about 15 years prior to coming into this job and um, I worked as a consumer advocate and I had never heard that um, we were establishing a linked data capability so you know people were a bit nervous about it but I'm pleased to say through a whole range of activities I've really seen a change in attitude. And um, in 2015 and 16, we went back to people who raised those concerns um, about their, uh, you know, big brother and their privacy, etc. And we we asked them, did they still have the same concerns? And a couple of people, and I'm talking, you know, I think we I went back to about 30 people who were originally involved in 2000 and 2004. And a couple of people said, you know, things like if a researcher uses our data, you know, he or she is under a moral obligation to help that data improve our lives. Researchers are using linked data and still never talk to a patient, a care or an actual human being. And we're not sure data linkage processes meet the gold standards of um, transparency and accountability. So there were a couple of people who still were a bit nervous about it. But the bulk of people that we talked about had really changed their attitude, having been involved and in a whole lot of awareness raising activities and, you know, said that things like health data has proven to be secure from health uh, from hacking to date. People are very relaxed about sharing intimate data on things like uh, Facebook and Snapchat and things. So what's the problem? 
Um, why don't we use the information that um, we have to drive good policy without, you know, and stop politicians and people with vested interests hijacking the debate and hiding behind the privacy issues. And why aren't governments, and this was the biggest thing, that government collect data, you know, on a range of things, and although my experience is all in health, there's lots and lots of data collected and people felt that governments have got a real responsibility to, to use that dif, um, data to make a difference to people's lives. So I suppose basically what I've seen is the big shift from um, you know, privacy concerns right across the board to saying you know, what we want now is the data to be used and good governance is about what um, will ensure that people's privacy is protected. So I just want to quickly run through um, some of the things that we've been doing. Um, as I said, we run training workshops and approximately 400 community members have attended training workshops that always include a topic on linked data capabilities in WA. And I have to say, I have never had anyone say after attending one of those training workshops that they're still worried about, you know, the the um, capability of using linked data. And in actual fact, people very much see that using anonymised data is privacy protecting. So um, we have numerous community members currently serving on projects that use linked data in a range of activities, reference groups. And I think, you know, currently we've got about a, a 410 consumer and community members sitting on research committees, uh, decision making committees across WA and a lot of those projects use linked data research. Um, community members have had input into submissions around the, the use of linked data for research for both state and federal government submissions and you know always that has been very positive. And then just very recently, we, we brought together 25 senior consumer and community members and reps um, to be involved in priority setting for future research using linked data. And that will be looking at social determinants of health across the life course, preterm to death. So again, you know, we've seen really positive changes once people have an understanding of what it's all about. Um, I'd just like to finish off with really saying that what I think is a greater qu uh, community awareness of the benefits of data sharing. I think not enough is done to explain to people how you know, the community can benefit from the use of big data. There needs to be a lot more community dialogue around the secondary use of um, data and particularly with my health records coming on, on board, I think that that's something that people have a tiny bit of nervousness about. And I think um, researchers need to work together in partnership with community members to address these concerns. And I, of course, would like to see greater involvement of consumer and community members in all research. And we're talking about the decision making about what is research, how it's conducted and the translation of those findings into policy and practice. Just lastly, I'd just like to leave you with this. I think this quote is fantastic and this is from one of the people that was quite nervous in the beginning and she really came around to see the benefits of it. But her um, thing was that she said, I know the data is anonymised but I want you, the researcher, to remember that it's my story. It's about me, my life, my family. Researchers should honour that by making information available to everyone about what the data is used for and what is found. And I just think that that says it all. Use the data, but actually do the right thing and tell me what you're using it for and what you're going to find. Thanks a lot.